in today's video we have my first Mila C3. This is a Mila C3 complete extreme power line. Not very powerful at the minute though, it is quite broken. So we'll have a look at what you get with a complete C3 extreme power line. Try and fix it. See if we can get it to turn on during this video. Yes, hello my vacuum cleaner chums. How are you today? Yes, in this video. Go and look at this. This was in part exchange with something else and some money for the £10 Dyson DC40. It happened. The swap took place. So yes, my first Mila C3 style of vacuum. I've only really ever had S5s. So this is something interesting. So what have we got? Well, we'll start with the tools so we can get them off the machine and get a bit closer. Oh, have a very nice, excellent condition telescopic wand here. It's been a bit used at the base as they sometimes can be. Because there's a plastic insert. And when it's used to do that, it wears down. We have the Mila Altec, Altec. Come on. Very bashed up, very heavily used. And with a plastic base plate, which I presume that they now have on this style of floor head, which again is that's never going to come up pretty. The front lint stripper, lint strip, lint picker thing is. Before you take it out. No, I can't. It's there, but the lint part is on this bottom bit is missing on that. Very, yeah, very heavily worn, but it's all there and it works. <laughs> oh, the hose is the hose. That's in excellent condition. Bit of a permanent bend on that end. Nice on this style. There is a slight texture to the handle grip. And they've revised the, the design of the suction relief valve over the earlier model. So that's pretty cool. So with those out of the way, I'll bring you down a bit and we'll have a closer look at the machine. Which is very nice in black. I say very nice in black. It's utterly, utterly destroyed. A good polish will help. But the problem is this Mila logo is raised up. I don't think it's stuck on either. I think it's probably part of the moulding. So I can't polish that entire square, which isn't going to be fantastic. It is an SGDC1. 1400 to 1600 watt. There we go. You might have to pause because I can't hold it any longer. Got some nice push button controls. Presuming they want a micro switch because there's no movement to them at all. Power and the cord rewind, which we'll start with first. We'll see if it's any good. Neither one tends to get a little bit tired after a while. It's got a comfort feature. So it will. The cord's a bit, yeah, it's getting caught because it's been wound up for a while wrong with that at all that's very good so so far so good now if we pop the hood we can see that there are two out of the three tools we have the very good condition upholstery brush not too bad there and if i can find it blindfolded upside down oh i ah, have very heavily used I shouldn't be quite that stubborn. Crevice tool. There, no dusting brush, but hey ho, that's not the end of the world. We go one step further. We can. Oh, it stinks. 
start to tell you what the problem with this machine is. It has been used very heavily for DIY. And once it was used very heavily for DIY, it was used to pick up water, as is still evident, by this soaking wet bag with added moisture still on it. And I've had this a week. It's just, ah, it's a genuine me in a bag, but it is coming out because it utterly, utterly stinks. I think we might be getting the bench back out in a minute. There is a, it's just as a soil, really. There is a post pre-motor filter there there is a post motor filter here which is full of dust as you can see it's just gone all the way through this entire machine right i'm going to we're going to clean this out because it smells and we'll actually also remove this because i haven't got the bag to put back in it and that way i can still ooh, Wow. Still shut the door. Right. Bear with. There we go, the bench rack can now stink of compost. So there we go, it's, there's still actually quite a lot of water in it. You can probably see the damp patch in the back corner. So, not entirely sure what we're going to find. Being on to my next point really, because I have plugged it in and turned it on. Because I didn't know it was that wet actually doing this now. I, I don't particularly want to do it again So what I'm going to tell you it does is that you push the on button and the max light blinks on blinks off and then nothing at all And that is why this is broken. And that is why I'm hoping that today We can have a look at fixing it and now that I see the quantity of water that is present in this machine I want to do it now before we have a you know before we try and fix it to see what is wrong because that is that isn't good so I'm gonna get some tools and we'll try and take this apart and see what we can find now the first problem with taking this apart is that I've not actually had one apart before I have helped mr. Hoover Lux put one back together but I've not had my own apart. So I know that the two screws, as on most meters, are hidden under the switch packs, which should just pop off, although I'm being a bit careful because I know on the S5, these are quite fragile, but they seem to have come off. Oh, there's only one screw, okay. Well, I'm sure it would be better if they came off anyway. So there's one screw. Now the rest seem to be under here. I don't want the motor to be swimming in water and I just got very lucky when I turned on the first time I didn't die. Not that I'm sure many people would mind if I died on camera. If I could get somebody to edit and upload the video after my untimely demise it might make prove quite popular. But yeah there's a lot of water in this somewhere. And I say it is broken really I just haven't shown you it turn on and do nothing but I'll blink a solitary LED and then turn back off again. So it might not even be fixable. Oh, you can't see it. It might not even be fixable. I'm not rolling that out. Still has value as a spares machine, there. Eh? Well, here we go. 
Okay, the second to last screw. The last screw is under here. Part of course is slightly shorter. Screw to drive over here for this middle one. Now I'm hoping that it's just going to lift off, although it is incredibly possible that I've missed something. I don't like the way that door works either. Oh no, there is one more screw down here. I thought that was a suction relief port. I know Mr. Hoover Lux will be watching this and probably screaming because he knows how to do these very well. I don't. Yet. Really? All your screws are gone. Ah. Hang on. And we have that outer shell off, and this whole part, I just need to turn around so I can have a look, aha, marvellous, stage one is complete, still haven't worked out how to get this off, I know that on the older ones it just pops out, doesn't seem to be doing that here. So I'm inclined to leave it and undo the other screws that I can now see. Aha! Here we go! over there now the first problem that I can ah, see is oh dear that is certainly had water through it Vikey and unplug it oh crumbs it's well this is sea solid <laughs> Right, this motor has definitely been a little bit neglected. I can't even turn that. Well, hasn't this turned into a different sort of video? I'm going to go and get some tools and we'll take the motor apart. Okie dokie, we need this. Oh, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Oh, and I need the magic fixing hammer to tap off the fan case. And then once you've tapped it off a bit, the rest should come with just a screwdriver and a light twisty motion. Might need a bigger screwdriver though. That one's quite thin. I've got somewhere a much bigger one. Ah, it's up here behind me. Although, if that's then going to prove too problematic again, just rest your screwdriver and give it a smack. As I say, eventually it just pops off, it's not held on by March. Ooh, there we go. So there's the fan case. Oh, there we go. It's turning. We're still going to carry on taking it apart though, because that is not right at all. 
Maybe find the right one of these and we'll take the fan off. With our microfiber cloths, so why don't tear my hands up? One very, very disgusting fan. I mean, I don't know how bad it. I can't really do it because it's too small, but yeah. That is one dirty fan. Right, they can go out of the way and we'll take these screws apart. I think this, yeah, we'll see how we go on this video because the motor might end up just being refurbished. I don't think it's worth even caring about trying to make it work as it is. Oh. Although, I won't do the vacuum cleaner yet. <laughs> ah. Ah. Wow. Oh dear. Let's take the carbon brushes out, which are not worn down. Oh, you can't even see. They're not worn down, but they are not great either. Wow. That is something else. I don't even know how to get them open. Okay, there's one. There's the other, again, not down to the wire. Oh yeah, that one's ah, one's done. Yeah. Next up is the armature, which we'll just take a couple of taps. Don't think it. I don't think it might be burnt out. I don't think it's very happy. Actually, the back bearing is absolutely fine in every way. This bearing, however, is completely and utterly knackered. Oh, goodness me. Right, let's take this out. This is obviously where all the thermal cutout happens and voltage control to the motor. It's gone rusty. Don't think it's actually a problem though. Obviously that circuit board, as we know, can cause many problems. That might actually be okay. <laughs> might actually be all right. And the next thing is to try and get the coil out. I don't think it's going to be a beautifully easy, to easy task by any stretch of the imagination. It is coming. Ha. Ah. So yeah, by it sucks up a little bit of water, it has sucked up a lot of water. Indeed. So, well, um, I think at this stage I'm going to stop the video because let's be honest, I can't just, I mean, that's why it isn't working. It's seized up and the carbon brushes are stuck. So I think the next logical step is for me to go away. Ah, there we go. It's for me to go away, clean all of this up as best I can, stick certainly one new bearing on it. 
and we'll reassemble it and then we'll put the machine back together filthy as it is and we'll see if it works and then how it works because obviously this motor i'm not expecting to actually run that well i just want to see it run so the next scene for you really will be this there we go told you it wouldn't take too long for you two days later in the becco household and things have possibly improved a little bit everything has been washed and some of it's come up really quite nicely indeed some well the com has cleaned up a fair bit i'm hoping that that's going to be okay the carbons they're both unstuck now but they weren't in too good condition and i'm basically using a bit of actually 400 grit sandpaper on a flat surface made them flat so hopefully at least they'll bed in or oh, i've also replaced the one of the bearings with a used one that one's okay so it's got okay bearings we can revisit that if needed the coil i haven't actually de-rusted it i just cleaned it with brake cleaner and a little brush and again just run around the inside with a little bit of wet and dry just to get the surface rust off it's gonna be okay the fan is actually a bit weird because it is a lot cleaner however as you can tell it's got a sort of weird surface to it now and that seems to be what the Silic Bang did. I soaked it in Silic Bang and boiling water. I actually forgot about it and the whole thing foamed up. And then it must have just sat that down. So the fan is no longer shiny and nice. In fact, here's, there's one of the washers. But it's clean. Hopefully it's distributed itself evenly. So it's not gonna mess itself up too much. And yeah, I've, basically now got to remember how the heck this goes together it should be fairly simple really because that bit goes there there is a metal tab which we should probably bend down slightly just so that the coil goes back on can't fully remember which way around the coil goes now which could be a pro i know we'll go this way because the little circuit board goes in that side and connects up to there they are for the carbon brushes so which i haven't actually got on me at the minute i need to fetch that so that won't push right down because it's now gripping its grip so we shall get the persuasion tool and just knock it in work around and eventually it'll drop into place yeah it does help if you don't smack the screwdriver down the side of the casing i think that's probably about it i don't think it went completely flush one more for luck Actually, no, that did go down a bit more. That's probably okay. Next, the armature drops in. And again, I'll use just the back of the hammer to pop the bearing into place. There we are. Now we can fit the carbons and hope that they're smooth enough. I'm expecting quite a smell when I turn this on. It's going to smell carbony. They normally do when you have the brushes out, let alone sit there with a load of wet and dry and try and clean them off. Could be interesting. Right, next, I've actually got to go and get the circuit board. Hang on. There it is. Look, I just gave that a wash and then put it on the radiator for a couple of days. Oh, I've gone and got my tea from the side as well. marvellous so this can go back in its little house that clipping on here what i'm doing now is the same for 
every Miele motor that I've had S5 motor bits fit into S7 motor bits although the actual physical shell's different same with this motor it all sort of works together so if you change the bearings or anything this is roughly how you do it right that's pushed down into there so we can put and again there's little two little dips that fit into two other little dips and then just gently knock around just to get it started. Then you've got your four screws and your screwdriver, which I haven't actually got ready. How shocking of me. Really? Did I even put it away? Uh oh. There it is. So it could have gone too far away. I've not even put my toolbox away. So. We'll put the alternate ones in first and this will be where it starts to clamp down. Oh, ah, that's, look at that, look, I've cracked. Okay, this is different. This is actually the bearing not being down enough because it, it, it's fine it's not going to ruin it that just needs to go down an extra tap doesn't it and actually like this it's fairly easy because you just need to find a socket and you will do just so it spreads the load over the bearing and just a little tap really try it again with a bigger socket you sort of want a bigger socket because you want to spread it onto the outer race all right let's give that a go so that's fine that'll push down i'm not fussed about that at all no it's still really Ooh. really haven't got that on have i bear with <laughs> i'm knocking in properly there we go and then just give it a little bit of a twist just to make sure it does actually spin. And it's fairly simple. There's the first washer, which has a little step in it, which will sit right on there. Then the fan. Then the second washer, which should just go over the last of the shaft. Ooh, uh. Then the nut, which will spin on anti clockwise. And then hopefully you can screw it down with your finger enough to grip the shaft and then get your socket set with a with your 14 millimeter bit on and then marvel when it doesn't really tighten up there we go Lip it up and then you find your fan case, which oh, I haven't got, and you tap that on as well. There it is. I put it up out the way of the kids because that's quite, well, yeah, that could be quite sharp. Certainly if you're four. That will just push on quite easily. Me the ones normally do, but check the fan still spins because if you push the fan down too much, like I just have done there, it will grip the fan. You just want a couple of very light taps. There we go, just to take it off. Of there, now we'll put everything now back together as is because frankly, I don't know if this is going to work. I'm not feeling particularly confident, I have to say. So I'm not going to mess around with the refurb just yet. Oh, both of these have fallen off. Thanks for that. And then, ah, I'll tell you what, we'll put them on the motor first because they're keyed and they'll sit better on the motor, obviously. It feels weird doing this to a machine that hasn't been refurbished, but so I'm just not. Oh, that's on completely upside down. I'm just not wasting the time at the minute. There we go. 
that drops in there that plugs in there and oh now I've got to try and put it all back together including where the heck this came from ah okay well that's simple there's that parking bracket oh we're getting caught up on me rug me rug and me blanket yes it got cold at the weekend and I can't afford the heating on too much, so I got a blanket out instead. Oh, this isn't fun. I remember we struggled with Mr. Hoover Luxes. And I just don't know. Okay, well that's a bit simpler. I'm going to faff, basically I'm going to faff around with this and get it together, because otherwise it's just going to go on forever. I want to test it before it gets too late. And with that, which actually wasn't as difficult as I was expecting, so who knows, one day I could possibly show you how to do it. I think that's how you're supposed to do that. But we have a vacuum cleaner again. Obviously, the back door shuts because it's missing the bag holder, but that's fine. Because frankly, it's still chucking out dust. What we're going to do now is I'm going to take this outside, set you up so you can see outside, and well, oh yeah, we'll see what happens because I am fully 50 50. It's either going to run but sound awful, then it'll either recover or it won't. We'll see. Now, the first point to notice is I don't actually know if it's turned on or not. So, this could do nothing, but I have a socket behind me. We're plugged in. Here. Well, that's turned itself off. I don't think it's going to turn back on again. Yeah. I feared that this might happen. Oh dear. Oh, well, back inside. It's not healthy. Yeah. Basically. Oh. The main problem is probably that con. That it, it spins with the bearings, and it, it, it did start to pick up a bit. But I think the problem is, is that the wear on the commutator is so great that it's just electrically shorting out in places, hence why it's trying to spin and doesn't. It also smells of burn, not a carbon dust burn. You know, you know. If you've ever had a vacuum cleaner go on, you, you know the smell. So I think, unfortunately, this needs a motor, which isn't going to be a quick job because it's probably going to be easier just to buy a completely trashed one with like a missing bag door or something for its motor. So I'm going to end the video here and promise you that the next time that you see this on my channel, I will have it refurbished and ready for the after video with some sort of replacement motor. Until then, well, we gave it a go, didn't we? So sometimes you just can't, that's still not on properly. Oh, right, it doesn't need to be, it's coming off again. Sometimes you can't win them all, you have to know when enough is enough. You can't fix everything with a hammer, although, we gave it a try. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. And me and this Mila will see you soon. Ooh, Bye bye.